Hi everyone, lovely to see you. This is generally how I look when I get up first thing in the morning, so isn't that a treat for you? Um, it's a Sunday morning when I filmed this and usually Sundays are a wash day for me because I like to try and preserve my hair before I actually start my work week. And yes, this is a video about hair, if you haven't guessed that already. I have been talking a lot about my flaxseed gel and how I love what it does to my hair and you guys have wanted to see it in action so that is what today's video is all about. I'm going to try and transform this bedhead mess mop situation into something a lot prettier. In fact it will go from this frizzy nightmare mess with no definition it just looks like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards to this amazingly gorgeous, defined, shiny... I think we can all agree that this is much, much better hair. So, if you want to see how I managed to create little ringlets like this and make my hair super shiny gorgeous, then you're in the right place so just keep on watching. First of all, you're going to want to get your hair as wet as possible. And you may well have heard about this before, but I've experimented with kind of towel dried hair to really saturated. And there is definitely something to be said about styling your hair when it's really, really wet. It just seems to work a lot better with pretty much any product that I've tried. So that would be top tip number one, really, really super wet hair. Next thing you can see that I'm doing is just giving it a good old brush through. This is a Denman brush. I will put any of the stuff that I use down in the description box below if you want to know what it is that I've used. But I'm just gonna give it a really quick brush through. And here we have my flaxseed hair gel, which as you can see, I made back in September. The reason why I make a note of the date is because it doesn't last very long. You do need to keep it in the fridge but as yet, I haven't found a preservative I can put in there to make it stable outside of the fridge for any longer. The texture of it will really depend on how long you've had it on the heat. You can make it quite runny or very thick. This is leaning towards the thicker end of the scale, but for me, I think this is kind of the perfect thickness. So I'm gonna take a fairly decent amount of the gel and I'm just gonna concentrate on half of my head of hair at a time. I'm gonna rub it through my hands to distribute it and warm it up because it is freezing, it's been in the fridge. And I'm just gonna rake it and smooth it through my hair. One of the things I love about this gel, apart from the fact that it is so inexpensive to make and works really well, is the fact that it gives the hair a lot of slip. So there's no real worries of tangling or anything whilst you're trying to distribute it through your hair. So now onto the other side, and it's exactly the same process, just distributing it through the hair, trying to coat as much as possible. It feels so nice in your hands and when you're running it through your hair. I don't know what it is and what magic it is about flax seeds or linseeds, whatever you want to call them, but it just does wondrous things to your hair. So now I'm just going to brush through my hair again just to make sure it really is distributed well. And that's the only product that I am going to be using in my hair, which is just unbelievable. I haven't actually tried experimenting with other products as well. I might have to try that at some point, but I just love how my hair comes out when I use this product on its own. So for the moment, that's all I've done. Now, I want to demo to you how it is the Denman brush creates curls because I know it just doesn't seem like it would. So I'm just going to grab this random section of hair and you can see that I've turned the brush and I'm pulling it down quite purposefully and you can see the moment I've let it go we've got some curls begin to form and I'll give it a little bit of a jiggle and they formed even more and just with a bit of encouragement you start to get the clumping and the shaping that you want. So this is what we're looking for over the entire head. 
and it really is as simple as that so I'm just going to rebrush through that again and I'm just going to quickly go through the rest of it and to be honest depending on how thick your hair is you can do as many or as few sections of that technique as you want to really and yes it's a messy messy job what I'm going to try and do first before I go on to that then then technique is I'm going to try and make sure my hair is falling pretty much how I want it to look when it's actually dry because with this particular technique you're kind of stuck in a way in terms of where the roots are so I'm just going to try and make sure I've got my hair lying how I like it which is generally with a bit more falling over one side of my head and I'm going to start with this section and as you can see just give it a bit of a jiggle just to try and encourage those curls to form and I'm just going to push it up at the roots of it because like I said it can make your roots quite flat because essentially you're brushing it into place but I'm literally just going to go around and in fairly decent sized sections I'm just going to brush it using that same technique and as I'm pulling the brush down just allowing the hair to smooth over the back of the brush and that is essentially it and you just give the hair a little shake, a little jiggle, just to help the curls form. And like I said, it kind of depends on how chunky you want your curls or how thick your hair is, depends on how big a section you do. I only really do about, well, somewhere between four and six sections. My hair isn't very thick at all. I found for how thick my hair is and how I like my curls to look, this amount of sections actually works really quite nicely and I'm just going to go over and do that first section again because it's one of the most visible parts of my hair once it's finished so I just want to make sure it's looking the best it possibly can. So that's the first stage of this styling process completed. Now it is time to get scrunching and I do a few different types of scrunching with different materials the first I use is microfiber. I mean, to be fair, you can probably just get away with scrunching however you would do normally, whether it be a t-shirt or something. I'll give it a good scrunch with some microfiber first. And then I move on to this towel, which is just t-shirt material. And yeah, we'll have a bit of a clean up whilst we're here as well. And just do a little bit more scrunching. The method that I use to scrunch is just like a gentle pulsing motion that you can see. I kind of gather up as much hair as possible and without squeezing too hard, I just gently sort of pulse scrunch. And as you can see, there's not actually an awful lot of moisture coming off. I think most of it has probably come off in the microfiber. This part of the process can really help define your curls depends really on how curly you want your hair to be if you want it to be mega super curly then scrunch 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 and scrunch some more if you're not too worried and want sort of looser curls then you don't need to worry about scrunching quite so much and you might just want to go straight to plopping your hair instead. I do like to shake my hair a little bit every now and again just to see how the curls are forming and falling and it just helps give me a really good idea of what kind of curl pattern I'm going to be left with. I'm now going to be moving on to plopping my hair just whilst I do the rest of my makeup and stuff. So just a cotton t-shirt and ding, there we go already plopped up out the way keeps it nice and secure just whilst i am putting my makeup on and there we go nice and made up face so my hair has just been sat up all that time it helps it dry a little bit more as well and I'm just going to give it another good shake, see how it's looking. If I feel like it's still a little bit damp, I might continue to do a bit more scrunching with the t-shirt, but so far things are looking pretty good really. From this point, depending on what your plans are for the rest of the day or what the weather's like, you could let it air dry or go straight to drying it with the hairdryer. I have it on a low speed, but a high temperature setting and I know what some of you are thinking, you're probably thinking, mm, high temperature, that's, that's not good, is it? Well, I try and make sure I move the hairdryer around as much as possible so it's not sat in one place for too long. 
but this process takes quite a long time and if it wasn't for having it on a fairly high heat it would take even longer and I don't tend to heat style my hair too often during the week so I think I can just about get away with it. I tend to dry my hair for somewhere between 5 to 10 minutes. It's definitely not dry here, but it's kind of got to that crispy phase. So what I tend to do is just leave it to air dry and also cool down a little bit before coming back and doing a second dry. This may seem like a lot of faff and it, it is, I suppose, to be fair but it's just what works for me. You can dry your hair in all one go, but I just get too hot and fed up and I do worry about what it's doing to my hair. So I just give a bit of a break and then come back and give it another blast. As you've also probably noticed, I don't tend to hold the hair dry that close to my hair either. At this point, my hair is pretty much dry, but obviously it's still quite hot. It's got the cast of the gel still on there, so that will need to be scrunched out. And what I'm just feeling for now is just to see how dry my hair actually is. But it is too hot to do anything further with, so you need to wait for it to cool down, because if you attempt to scrunch that gel cast out any sooner, then you're just gonna end up with very fluffy hair. And now that it has cooled down, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scrunch through the hair, breaking that cast up to reveal beautifully soft and defined ringlets. And I'm also going to do some shaking at the roots as well, just to try and inject a bit more volume back into my hair as well. I only concentrate on the roots and just by doing that it helps give that volume to the hair again. And I always, always forget to take my blooming ring off and then it ends up getting caught in my hair. So yes, take that off and do a little bit more sort of massaging I suppose through the scalp but just to fluff things up a little bit more stop it from looking quite so flat whilst at the same time not messing with the rest of the hair shaft because we don't want it to get too frizzy and what you should be left with is beautifully shiny well defined gorgeous curls I've got this gorgeous corkscrew here, which is super shiny. If I could get my whole hair looking like that, that would be amazing, maybe one day. And what I'm gonna do as just a final move is I'm gonna tip my head forward and just do a little bit more shaking just to get as much volume into my hair as possible. Cause like I keep saying, there is not very much of it at all. And there we have it. The finished result is super shiny, beautifully defined curls. I am over the moon with this flaxseed gel. It is a little bit of a faff in terms of the process using the Denman brush, but I have experimented using just the flaxseed gel and how I would style my hair normally, and it still comes out really beautiful. It's just that if you want the extra definition of the curls, then I would definitely recommend having a go with the Denman brush because it does give amazing results. I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful and I will see you again soon. Bye!